Hi, One Church. We're so thankful that you have joined us for service. If you are new to One Church, then you can text NEW1C to 97000 to get plugged into everything going on in the life of our church. And now we're going to have a time of worship.
dare not lift them up to the Holy One. You plead my cause, you ride my rocks, you break my chains, you've overcome, you gave your life to give me my What an awesome time of worship we just had together. We're going to continue our worship now through our giving. There are several ways that you can give here at One Church, and those are going to appear on the screen now. Thank you so much for your generosity that helps us continue to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus and to be for our community through for Clarksville. I'm so excited to announce that on January 24th, we're going to have a family experience service. That will be on January 24th at 11 a.m. at our in-person location at 2111 Trenton Road. This is going to be a time when parents and kids can come together and worship together. Also coming up on January 24th is our group launch. If you are not part of a community group at this time and you're looking to get plugged in, text groups 1C to 97,000. Continue down Scavern Street for a half mile. In 400 feet, make a left. Right here? Detour up ahead. Is that? This is a parking lot. Now what slow am I? Down. Rerouting. This is the direction? What are we doing? 
Rerouting. Am I here? What are we? Just keep driving. Detour up ahead. Bro, this don't lead nowhere. Siri. Stop. What? Stop here. Why? Why here? Am I here? What are we doing? Just wait. Wait? I've never heard it say that ever. Rerouting. What? Drive now. Where am I? What? Drive. Okay. 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 No. Ah! 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 Well, hey, OneChurch.tv online, Pastor Chris here, and we're in part three of a series we're calling Detours, where we're looking at the life of Joseph. As always, uh, we provide small group questions, whether you're in a small group of one or a small group of many, and you can download those on our OneChurch.tv app that you can download for free off of the Google Play or the App Store, or you can just download them here if you're watching this content on Facebook Live or YouTube. So, what we've been talking about up to this point is, what is a detour? Well, detours are inconvenient distractions from your original pre-planned route. Detours are normally out of the way. They take you off the beaten path. It takes you longer than you had planned to actually show up to arrive where you were hoping to go. Often detours, get this, are inconvenient. But as we learned last week, Detours are designed to contribute to construction. That the purpose of your detours is to develop you for what God has for you. You see, construction is a good thing because it means that improvement is taking place. We've seen this in Joseph's life. Some bad stuff, yes, has happened to him, but was all a part of the good plan of a good God, of how he had to take Joseph from Israel uh, from where he was living to Egypt, where he was going to rescue hundreds of thousands of people. And as always, let's start with the end of Joseph's story so that it'll help us as we look onto his detours. Because this is at the end. He's at the end of his life. He's made a huge difference. He's second in command in Egypt, and here's what he says. You plotted evil against me, my brothers, but God has turned it to good in order to preserve the lives of many people who are alive today because of what had happened. Before you arrive to where God wants you to be, the place where you can make a true difference, God has to take you on a detour. You know, detours exist, again, because construction is taking place. When you're on a highway and there's a detour, it's usually because there are workers trying to fix, build, correct, or improve something. Well, God is going to take you and I on a detour because he's constructing something in our lives as well. He's constructing a detour for us, and he is constructing us for the detour. Detours are inconvenient. They take you out of the way, and all of that is because God is more interested in our character than our own comfort. God is interested in our development, not just our arrival. How we said it last week was that God cares more about the development of the dreamer than the realization of the dream. So today, I just simply want to ask you this question. How do I know if God has me on a detour? That's a good question, isn't it? How do I know God is behind this or maybe I'm just unlucky? Or how do I know that this is a detour God has put me on so that even though I'm on a detour, I'm on a detour in his will, not out of his will? How do I know that this is not just bad circumstances in life? How do I know that God is behind my situation? Well, we're going to be looking at four proofs that you're on God's detour. And proof number one, that you're on God's detour toward where God has you on your destination is that you're suffering because of good and not bad. Let's be honest. Most of us, we suffer because we made a bad mistake, right? A bad decision, a stupid, we may have had a stupid choice, a bad habit. Maybe we just wanted to sin. Sometimes we just do good and we still suffer consequences that are bad. That's how you know, proof number one, that God has you on a detour because you did right and yet something still happened wrong. Back to the life of Joseph. We started off as Joseph as a 17-year-old teenager who had a dream, a God-given dream. And we watched Joseph go on a detour by getting thrown into a pit. 
Uh, he's mistreated by his brothers. He's sold as a slave. He's kidnapped, and he's taken from his home to become a refugee in Egypt. He gets sold to Potiphar, who, Mr. Potiphar, he's kind of a big deal. He's the head of the Secret Service protecting Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Uh, in Potiphar's household, Joseph flourishes. Why? Because God is with Joseph. Joseph. Joseph is living out his faith, and people are starting to take notice, including Potiphar's wife. She, she starts taking notice as well because Joseph is fine-looking. Potiphar's wife, day after day, tempts and pressures Joseph to get jiggy with it, and Joseph refuses, so she trumps up a charge of rape against Joseph, and Joseph is fired from his job, and where we see him next is he is in jail. This is verse 20 of Genesis 39. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held, and there he remained. Joseph is suffering because he did good not because he did bad, and that's proof number one that this is a God-designed detour. Joseph is suffering for his faith, and he's right smack dab in the will of God. Joseph is right smack dab where God wants him to be. He's right where he wants him to be in God's favor, and yet he wasn't in a pleasant place. The word jail here refers to a dungeon, this was, an, a, this was a, prisoner, a prison where the king's prisoners were. And a lot of people, and honestly, I've thought this, a lot of people think that because things are going bad, then I must be out of the will of God. If things are going bad, I must be out of God's favor. But the answer is no. If you are doing right and things are going bad, then you are right where God wants you to be. God just has you on a detour. God has something bigger and better for you. Now, if you're a Christ follower and you're making decisions based on what God wants in your life and not what society wants and not what your friends want, not even what you want, the Bible says you can bet your bottom dollar that there will be persecution, that there will be suffering. Let me simply say this. If you never get negative repercussions because you're standing as a Christian, you're either not a Christian or you're not really a good one. Because the Bible says all those who make decisions based upon their faith, who live, desire to live a godly life, they're going to be mistreated from time to time. If you're serious about Jesus, you will have to make choices that will go against the grain. Everybody's not going to be your friend. But as Christ followers, many times we just don't expect that. We expect that if we do right, and if we make right decisions, then things will be right. And if we're not careful, we will end up walking away from God because we think God owes us something. Let me explain that from my own life. You know, I've never experienced the pain of being falsely accused and sent to prison, and I hope I never will. But as I've reflected on Joseph's experience, my, my mind went back to a time in my own life when I was falsely accused and terribly humiliated by several men whom I thought were my friends. I talked about this in week one, but they totally violated my trust, and at the same time, they tried to destroy my character, and I had done nothing wrong. I had time, and again, took the high road and tried to choose the godly way. And I wasn't perfect, but yet... All the while, these men were falsely accusing me, and they were involved in some very sinful and shady behavior themselves. One was even arrested in a prostitution sting. Needless to say, though, it was terribly painful. And because I had done the right thing, I expected God to do right by me. I expected that really God owed me, and I was disappointed with God. For most of us, someone at some point in our lives has done something to us that we feel is unfair and unjust. But remember, if you're suffering because you're doing the right thing, God has you on a detour. Joseph is thrown into jail because he would not compromise the commitment of his faith. That's proof number one. The second proof you have that you are exactly where God wants you to be is that God doesn't take you out of the problem but he joins you in it. God shows you his presence in the midst of the problem. Let's 
pull back and let's look at some other stories in Scripture. God didn't keep Daniel out of the lion's den. He just joined him in the lion's den, didn't he? God didn't keep Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. It says that there was a fourth person who joined them in the fiery furnace. You see, God, because he's taking you through a detour, he may not stop the detour, but he will jump in the car with you. Verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord is with Joseph where? In the prison and showed him his faithful love. Verse 23, the Lord was with Joseph and caused everything he did to succeed. If you're obeying God and things are not going well, that just means you're on a detour. Proof one. And I know you're praying, God, get me out of this problem. Get me out of this detour. But he may not be ready to get you out yet. So if he's not ready to get you out and you're in it, it's proof number two. Look for him joining you. Look for him coming in where you're at. He might not take you out of the rain, but he will join you in the rain and he's going to be holding an umbrella. The Lord was with Joseph and he was in jail. He isn't uh, with uh, Joseph where things are going perfect. He's in with him while he's in cuffs and shackles. Now, let me simply say this. If you're suffering uh, for because you've done something wrong, then you need to make that right so God can join you in that. Because you may not be experiencing God because you're not in there for his reason. you got to make it right. You're in there for your reason and your stupid mistake. So you need to get that right with God so God can join you. But here, the Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed him his faithful love. That's what the scripture says. Isn't that crazy? He's in prison and God's showing him his faithful love. And and you're going to look for the presence of God. That's proof number two. Now, how did God show up? Oh, this is interesting. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that had happened in the prison. So Joe got a promotion in jail. God didn't change the situation. He's still in jail, but he gets promoted in jail. So the way God shows up is not delivering out of it, but showing his presence in it. So proof number two, the way you know that you're on a God detour and you're not just experiencing bad luck, or karma, or chance, or just bad circumstances, is when God shows up and gives you a hint of his presence in the middle of a situation he's not ready to take you out of yet. In fact, let me just simply hit the pause button here, and let me just speak to this real quick. I mentioned bad luck and karma, superstitions and horoscopes, all of those go against the teachings of Jesus. Let me simply tell you about the God found in the Bible. And if you're new, maybe you're not a church person, you're not a God person, maybe you believe in all of this stuff, let me tell you what God has to say about himself. He is sovereign. That's a big word. It simply means he's over all things. He's in control. He's he's omnipotent. What does that mean? That just means he's all-powerful. There's no one more powerful than he is. He's omniscient. That just means he's all-knowing. There's nothing that he does not know. So if God is sovereign, if he's omnipotent, if he's omniscient, then bad luck, karma, superstitions, horoscopes, all are a farce and you're wasting your time because God is in control and he's got any turbulence that might come your way. Have you ever been on a plane and experienced some turbulence, some really bad turbulence? I've flown a lot, a lot over the years. And the plane is just jumping all over the place, scaring you to death. And people are screaming, right? People are tightening their seatbelts, even though they're pretty tight to begin with, right? I mean, they're putting dents in the armrests because they're gripping so tight. Everybody's nervous, and the plane's turbulence is all over the place. But then the captain comes on and says, you know what? We're going to be going going through some turbulence over the next 15 minutes. Sorry for the uncomfortable trip but we should soon be out of this. You see, when you hear the captain's voice, it doesn't stop the turbulence, does it? But it changes how you feel in it. Just knowing that the captain is there, and you don't even see the captain. You can't see him, but 
You can just hear him. But just hearing from him, even though you can't see him, kind of gives you a calm as you're maneuvering through the turbulence of life. Sometimes God doesn't lift the turbulence or even take you out of the situation. He just lets you hear from him. And just knowing that you hear from him can calm you down as you're going through the bumps and downs and ups and all around. The first way you know you're right where God wants you to be is that you're suffering because you're doing right. Why am I going through this? Why am I going? Why is this financial thing not turning around? Why is this relationship not turning around? This thing at work, why is it not turning around? This health thing, it's just not turning around. But you're doing what you know what God wants you to do. That's proof number one. Proof, the second thing is simply this, that God shows up in the midst of your suffering where you hear his voice. Number three, the proof that you're on God's detour, and not just some circumstance, is simply that God gives you people to serve who are in the same circumstances while you're suffering. God gives you a ministry to other people who are going through the same junk you're going through. Watch this story, Genesis chapter 40, verse 1. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and Pharaoh's chief baker offended their royal master. They messed up somehow with Pharaoh. Pharaoh became angry with the two officials, and he put them in prison where Joseph was, in the palace of the captain of the guard. So these two guys get put in the same prison where Joseph is, and it's not coincidence, it's not luck, it's not happenstance, it's not karma. No, God is behind the scenes setting Joseph up to make a difference. Verse 4, they remained in prison for quite some time, and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, who looked after them. So we got two guys who were put in prison with Joseph who are working for Pharaoh. One is a cupbearer, and the other is a baker. Now, let's talk a little bit about that. The job of a cupbearer was to drink what was being offered to the king before the king could drink it in case poison had been put in it. Because if poison had been put in it to kill Pharaoh, the cupbearer would drink the first cup. He would go, he would die, right? Long live the king, right? In fact, some of you Bible scholars remember Nehemiah. He was also a cupbearer. One of the books of the Bible in the Old Testament was written about him. He was a cupbearer to the king. So a cupbearer was kind of like a personal assistant. They were right there by the king. Now the baker, we know what a baker does, makes all kinds of pastries and goodies. He's making the cakes and the cookies and all the stuff for the parties. They both have one thing in common, actually two things. They both work for Pharaoh and they both have something to do with food. And it says that Pharaoh was angry with them and put them in prison. And we're going to find out that this was a pretty serious charge because one of them is going to die. Capital punishment. Now, who would have thought, except God, that these two criminals would hold the key to Joseph's ultimate destination of being second in command of Egypt? Who would have thought that these two criminals would hold the key to his detour? These are people God placed in your path who are going through the same thing you're going through. Joseph's in jail, they're in jail. And here's our big idea today. To get unstuck from a detour, serve others who are struggling alongside of you. To get unstuck from a detour, serve others who are struggling alongside of you. You see, here's our tendency. Our tendency when we're suffering is to become self absorbed. The tendency when you're suffering is to just lick your own wounds. The tendency when you're suffering is just to think about three people, me, myself, and I. That's the tendency when we're suffering is just forget everybody else because I've got my own problems. What we do is we get selfish in our suffering. But God brought these two men to Joseph. And you want to look for people who are going through the same things you're going through. Why? Get this so that you can help them while God, the God you're waiting on, to help you. 
so that you can help them while you're waiting for God to help you. You see, anytime God has us on a detour, God gives you people to serve who are in the same circumstances while you're suffering. So focus on others and serve them while you are struggling. And that's what Joseph did. Look at verse 6. Joseph saw that these people are down and out. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they were both looked what? Upset. Why do you look so worried today, he asked them. Now, this is kind of funny. Number one, why are you worried? Well, I'm in jail, chief, right? But guess where Joseph was at? He was in jail too. So Joseph is worried about their problems and their sad face while he is in jail. One of the ways God moves you through our detours is through your ministry and you helping other people out. So if you're unwilling to, unwilling to minister to somebody else, you could be delaying getting to where you want to be because you're increasing your own detour. Because you're selfish and you're so self-centered and so focused on you that you're missing the blessing of the ministry that comes by helping somebody else. To get unstuck from a detour, serve others who are struggling alongside of you. These two guys, the cupbearer and the baker, both have a dream. And we see that, we know that Joseph interprets dreams. He says to the cupbearer, by the way, your dream means that you're going to be released in three days. And he tells the baker, oh, by the way, your dream means that you're going to be killed and executed in three days. You see, Joseph had this spiritual gift that God had given him of dreaming and interpreting dreams. That's his gift. That's his contribution. He can do that. And God gives him an opportunity to use his gift with some other people who needed his gifting. Listen to this, y'all. He helped with their dreams while he was waiting for the fulfillment of his own dream. God had given him a dream when he was 17 years old. He's now in his 20s. Years have passed. While all of this was taking place, he's worked at Potiphar's house, and now he's been working in prison. Years have passed, and he's in his 20s, and he's just, tell, he's just helping other people. If you want to see God show up in your detour, hook up with some other people on their detour and help them. You don't have to be sophisticated. You don't have to be a college degree or a seminary graduate. You just have to have a gift that you're willing to let God use to get unstuck from a detour, serve others who are struggling alongside of you. Joseph is going to use his God-given gift, and Joseph knows where this gift comes from. Look at what it says in verse 8. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph said. Joseph says, this is a God moment. Don't miss the God moment because you're on a detour, y'all. Because the detour is the God moment. God wants to use you in your detours. Noah ministered while waiting for rain. Ruth ministered while she waited for God to change her situation. Rebecca ministered while she was waiting on God to give her a mate. They all ministered in the period of their detour. So don't miss your ministry because of your misery. To get unstuck from a detour, serve others who are struggling alongside of you. Don't miss it. Or 2 Corinthians 1 says, He comfort us in all troubles that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. Isn't that good? Whatever you need God to do for you, you do for somebody else that's in a situation like you. Jailed up just like you. Because God, he not only wants us to be vertical, he wants us to connect horizontal. He wants us connected with him and connected with each other. Both ways. To love the Lord your God with all of your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. To carry somebody else's burdens in the same situation that you're in. Y'all remember the movie The Wizard of Oz, don't you? Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy is caught between a good witch and a bad witch. And they're fighting, and she winds up in a place she never wants to be, right? Dorothy wants to be home in Kansas. That's her destination. She wants to be back home. That's where she wants to go. But she finds out the only way she, she, she's going to get to where she wants to go is by following the Yellow Big Road, right? So she's walking down the road, but she doesn't know how long this road is. 
Just like Dorothy, you and I, we don't know how long our detour is going to take us, how long it's going to take us, and when we're going to get back on the main highway. But along the way, Dorothy is going to run into some problems. She's got the Wicked Witch of the West. She's got flying monkeys. I can't even make that up. She's got all kinds of stuff that's going to be messing with her, and she's only trying to get home because there's no place like home. But along the way, she runs into a lion with no courage, a tin man with no heart, and a straw man with no brains. And guess what, they ha- what happens? They form a small group. They form a small group, and they minister and help and serve one another. They encourage one another because they are all trying to get to the same place. They're all trying to get to the wizard. So they hook up with other folks who are struggling because they're all trying to get to the wizard. One needs a heart. One needs a brain, one needs courage, and one just needs to get back to Kansas. By the way, if you've ever been to Kansas, anyway, I don't know if I want to get back there, but they all need the same wizard. Don't travel your detour alone. To get unstuck from a detour, serve others who are struggling alongside of you. The first way you can prove that you're on God's road, detour, that you're on for God, is that you're suffering because you're doing right. The second proof is that God shows up in the midst of your suffering where you hear his voice. He verifies that he's still with you. The third way is you don't do the journey alone, but you hook up with other people and you serve and minister to them along the way. And finally, and the most depressingly, the way that you know that you're on a detour is from God. You're right smack dab where you're supposed to be is that God makes you wait. When God postpones your change, when God postpones your release, Joseph is, is left waiting. Joseph interprets the dream. He interprets the dream of both the baker and the cupbearer, and he tells the cupbearer, listen, you're going to live in three days, Joseph says, but within those three days, verse 13, Pharaoh will restore you to your position as his chief cupbearer, and please Remember me and do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. He says, look, I just gave you some good news. I told you, told you you're going to be living in three days. So just do a brother a favor. When you get out of here... Talk to Pharaoh. Tell him who I am. I didn't do anything wrong. Remember me to Pharaoh because I want to get out of here. You see, Joseph, he wasn't happy to be there. He wasn't all, praise God, I'm miserable in jail. No, he says, I want to get out. Get me out of here. Tell Pharaoh about me, verse 21. And then verse 23, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph never giving him another thought. Dang. You are exactly where you're supposed to be when it looks like God has you on the, right on the edge of being delivered, when it looks like he's just about to come through for you, when it looks like victory is just right around the corner, and then something happens. When God goes left in you, just like it feels like, man, I'm almost out, and you have to wait. I know what you're saying. Why did God delay? Well, you're going to have to come back next week for that because God has a specific reason why he postponed the deliverance. But when God brings you to the edge of deliverance and then turns, then you are just like Mary and Martha when it, with Lazarus. Don't you care about us and Lazarus? You're like the disciples in the boat. Do you not care that we're going to die in this storm? How can you be letting me go through this? In fact, if you care, it looked like it was the right person. It looked like it was the right job. It looked like it was the right financial decision. It looked like that was going to be a blessing. It looked like, it looked like, it looked like, and now I can't see nothing. God is setting Joseph up for a pivotal moment where Joseph is ready and Pharaoh is ready. The situation is ready where the only person who will get the glory isn't a cupbearer or Joseph or anyone else. The person who will get the glory will be God himself. Listen, right now, you're tuning in and you feel stuck. 
Don't get all selfish in your suffering. Don't miss your ministry because of your ministry. Don't get, don't get so embittered because you're miserable that you miss whom God is calling you to minister to because to get unstuck from a detour, we all have to serve others who are struggling alongside of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for hearing our voice, hearing our cries. And Lord, I'm so grateful, Lord, that we don't have to trust in karma, or circumstances, or anything like that, God, that well, we trust in a God who there is no just chance. If it gets to us, it has to pass through your fingers. We need that reminder right now. At the beginning of 2021, we need that reminder that you are in control. That if salvation is going to come, it's not going to be because Joseph gets a credit or a cupbearer or this person or that person or this party or that party. No, it's all about you, God. And it always has been. God, I pray that you would encourage us, that you would meet with us in those dark, alone times, and that you would be with us just as you were with Joseph. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for that awesome message today. The church experience doesn't stop here. If you have a family and you're looking for an opportunity to worship together, then head on over to our website at www.onechurch.tv slash kids. There you're going to find links to take you to YouTube where you can do church together at home as a family. Thank you so much for joining us today.